Om. Hello friends, this is Luke with the Yoga School. We're going to be discussing Module 1.2, which is the Samkhya philosophy, my favorite section of the training. This is a section that a lot of people don't really want to get into because it's philosophical. However, it's incredibly important for a few reasons. The first is that the, the philosophy of yoga known as Samkhya is actually very, very different than what we might expect and it's most certainly different than the types of philosophy that we have studied in the Western world. So Samkhya is extremely old, and I mean really, really, really old. Samkhya was a philosophy of people that existed long before there's any archeological remnants whatsoever. However, because their philosophy was so advanced, as you can kind of tell when you study it, we know that it existed for probably thousands of years before there were any documentation. And the documentation of Samkhya is several thousand years old. Now, Samkhya philosophy and yoga philosophy are essentially the same thing, but there's one key difference. There's two key differences. The first difference philosophically is that yoga has a concept known as Ishvara. It's an I-S, it's an S with a squiggly in Sanskrit, V-A-R-A. -A. Ishvara is a yogic concept that is related to the self, the Purusha, the infinite seer within being concentrated somewhere outside of space and time, but at the same time within existence, there is a piece of consciousness that is perfect, that remains perfect, and that relates to us. This concept does not mean that yoga believes in God, but it does present something that a yoga practitioner can look up to, surrender to, in terms of the practice of Ishvara Pranidhana, which is brought out several times in the Yoga Sutras. It's actually brought out, Ishvara Pranidhana is brought out more than asana. Ishvara Pranidhana being the surrender to the omniscient seer within. So the first thing that's different is that yoga believes in Ishvara. You don't have to believe in it, but the yoga philosophy itself does. The second thing is that Samkhya doesn't really care what you do. It's similar, in my point of view, to a periodic table of the elements. In fact, if you look at a tree of Samkhya or a table of Samkhya, it looks like a scientific table. In fact, Samkhya is known as the realist school. Echoing what's in the Yoga Sutras, Samkhya only allows three types of knowledge to be included and to be considered true or factual or worthy. That is experience, inference, and inference meaning if, it, if two plus two equals four, then two plus two plus two equals six and so on. Not inference like, well, I heard this one time, so I'm gonna infer this other thing that isn't there. No, it just means that you can mathematically deduce or you can deduce certain things through gathering data. It's a very scientific system. Experience, inference, and scripture. The scripture, of course, are things like the Samkhya Sutras, the Yoga Sutras, the Samkhya Karaka, or what we call the Yoga Shastras. We have these scriptures that were written by experts. These were the gurus of the past or the wise ones. So we trust those three sources and that's it. So Samkhya is already laid out in terms of what it thinks the universe is made of, but it doesn't really give any advice on what to do. In fact, Samkhya means about as much to a dog as it does to us. It's just there. It's very dry, in fact. I'll break character a little bit and tell you that it's one of my hobbies to go on the internet and try to find people that included Samkhya in their PhD dissertations. And there's one that tried to create a lifestyle based on Samkhya. The, the man said it was amazing. Samkhya is so applicable to life. In fact, if you just utilize the tenets of Samkhya, you can live a life. It's amazing. 
And I think it's funny because we have yoga, and that's what yoga is. It's an extension of the Samkhya philosophy that makes it practical for us as human beings. Samkhya is where yoga came from, period. There's, there's no discussion to be had about it. Samkhya philosophy is yoga philosophy. You could say, well, yoga has changed in different lineage, no doubt about it. But yoga did not come from what people call Hinduism. Yoga didn't come from Greek mythology. It didn't come from Zen Buddhism. It didn't come from Tai Chi. It came from Samkhya. That's, that's just a fact. That's the way that it is. So in order to understand yoga, we have to understand Samkhya. At the very least, to the degree that if we get stuck somewhere along the lines reading the Yoga Sutras or reading the Shiva Samhita, we're like, what, what does this mean? We can go back to the Yoga Sutras, we can go back to the Samkhya Karaka and we can understand the origin of the term and, and what it means in the scope of the philosophy that yoga is alluding to through all of its practices. Samkhya is different than yoga in that it does not have Ishvara and that it has no practical application. However, it's very, very important to understand. You might think about it as a GUR in college. You want to study yoga. Everybody wants to study yoga. But Samkhya comes first. It's the foundation that yoga is built upon. And if you look around and you see so many yoga classes taught by teachers that don't even know what it is, well, there's a certain hollowness to that. Like, what am I teaching? I don't know. What does this figure mean behind me? I don't know. What does duality mean? What does non-duality mean? I have people, I see people on Instagram saying, I believe in non-duality. That's really cool. What do they even mean? Maybe they know and I'm just ignorant. I don't, I don't really know. But I know that yoga is dualistic. How is it dualistic? What does it mean dualistic? Am I dualistic? Did you split me down the middle? What am I dualized? Samkhya explains this. What is duality? And why is it so important in yoga? Why does yoga say that duality is the truth? And that all ignorance, all avidya, which is the root cause of suffering, the root cause of the kleshas, the root cause of, in Yoga Sutra 1-2, yoga's chitta vritti niroda, the root cause of chitta vritti, the disturbances of mind, the illusory existence that we're trapped in, samsara, it's all from one problem. And that is that we are dualistic and we don't know that. It's that simple. It's very difficult to grasp this concept without studying Samkhya. If you study Samkhya, you don't understand it, that's fine. But at least know that it's there. On an ethical note, I'm a white person. I mean, that's essentially my identity in this society. I'm from Idaho. I love yoga. I love to study this. This is my favorite thing. This is my yoga school. I love it here. But why, why would I try to teach this without knowing where it came from, knowing what it is? To me, it's not correct to teach something that you don't fully understand. And in order to understand yoga, you have to understand Samkhya. You may not need to understand the people where Samkhya came from, and they may not even have ever cared that you did. But as a teacher, I feel like it's important that you understand Samkhya and what it represents. Because what it represents is different than the fundamental aspects of reality that we take for granted. It's calling into question the way that we believe things are on a very, very rudimentary level. 
it's very worth, very much worth exploring. And that's why we study Samkhya at the beginning of the training.